Hey friends, Paloma here and welcome to the Bates House Shop. If you are new here, my name is Paloma and I love vintage everything. In my journey to building my own collection of useful vintage pieces, I came across so many pieces that I simply could not leave behind out in the world. Now my shop is a little different because I do not sell as is. I purchase clean, sanitized, refurbished, and inventory. I carefully wrap and ship priority for insurance purposes through USPS for a variety of reasons, but most of all, it's the most affordable way for me to provide a pleasant experience worth my buyer's money. Again, I do not sell as is. Now it's a long story as to how my shop came together in one room, but previously parts of it were everywhere in different spaces. God willing, I won't have to do that again unless it's for abundance reasons. Now that it's all together, we can talk about the overall foundation for all of my organized systems in my house. It's very simple. One step in, one step out, top to bottom, left to right. Top being the least accessed, the bottom being the most. The space flows from the left side of the room to the right side of the room. Now keeping to that flow, we are gonna start on the left side of my inventory system with our inventory shelving. Let's take a look at the structure. You're ultimately going to need a strong structure that can handle a lot of weight, a lot of movements of the bins in and out, and can be modified if necessary, and can hold a lot or a little depending on the season that you're in. I would absolutely suggest finding a shelf with a smooth surface for easy pushing in and pulling out of your bins, as opposed to a more porous particle kind of material. These shelving units were actually from Costco when we just moved in for our coupon stockpile, which we no longer need since starting our sustainability awareness and homestead journey and lifestyle. So I only had to buy one more shelf and you can find them at your local hardware store for roughly about $200, which is definitely an investment, but it's probably one of the most important ones that you do invest in. But of course, everything is a little inflated right now. So shop around, be selective, try marketplace, you don't have to replace it often, so you want something that's got good quality to it. The bins for me are preferably clear bins. The main reason is you can easily see which bin has room for more inventory. To track my inventory, each bin is labeled bin and its coordinating number. They are in order from bin 1 to bin 44 as of now. This makes taking inventory very easy because I've come across digital glitches while doing inventory like double listings, missing items, missing photos. So while I'm doing inventory checks in the eBay system, all I have to do is type bin into the custom label or SKU bar and its number and go down the list from 1 to 44, making sure that all the bins and contents match. The labels are super affordable. They are Jot brand from Dollar Tree in an 18 count pack. They are very clean looking, a great size, and you get 18 for a buck 25. The actual bins are from Walmart. When I purchased them, they were $4.98. I'm pretty sure now, as everything else, it's gone up quite a bit. I stocked up when I did, and I'm glad I did because they no longer sell these specific types of bins. These are perfect for the spacing that I had because they are a little bit shorter than your standard Walmart bin with the white lid and they had black lids, which black is my favorite color. Now let's move on to unlisted inventory. I do not refer to my unlisted inventory as a death pile. I feel like that it ruins any motivation to getting it listed. When considering my unlisted inventory, I wanted to be free to buy what I wanted, but have a max that tells me, okay, stop shopping and get to work. Since it is still a part of the inventory process, it has to be in the flow with the inventory. So I went up. I moved all of the shelves up to leave a gap at the very bottom to store the bins that stored unlisted inventory. I decided to buy six laundry baskets. They're kind of tall. They're big enough to store quite a bit of product. They're easy for putting items directly in and they have handles that is easy to transport when it comes time to start prepping. I can see into them and numbering them is very important for when I am gonna go in and create the actual listing information. I love the fact that they can slide in and out directly underneath the shelf because I typically do my listing preparation on the floor, <laughs> sitting Indian style with my notebook. And coming in at $4 a piece, that is definitely an affordable solution. 
Now let's talk about my process for creating my listings. I have a notebook that I put all my information into when looking through each basket. So I will start a new row of product labeling the basket number. So in my newest listings, I have basket number two, and I always start it off the same way. I take the weight of the item that is going to go into the listing after shipping material is included. I take the box size and I put those down the first row. I put my item description and information in the next larger row. And on the very end, I put the dollar amount that we're going to put into the listing. Once the entire basket has been completely researched, I will pass it on to the boys who are my new hires in training, and they will start getting it cleaned, prepped, sanitized, and ready for pictures. It makes it so that everything stays contained and very easy to see what you're working with in one basket at a time. As I bring in new product, I will be able to jump into the next basket and begin filling that one. Now, when I look at my baskets one through six and I see several different empty baskets, that shows me a few things. Number one, we are staying on top of our game. I am not overbuying and I am ensuring that everything is going into the actual inventory so that it doesn't become a death pile. On top of that, the clear bins and the baskets actually work together visually to let me know if I need to slow down. It also tells me if I need to go back and maybe do an actual inventory check and see what's wrong with the items that I'm listing if I'm not moving product and also listing consistently because of course there is an algorithm. But when I look at my baskets and I see them full of product and I look at my clear bins and I have no room to put that product, it's time to do some evaluating. Maybe purge some items that I could sell in a yard sale or something like that, find some gifts, whatever. It could also let me know that it's time to bulk up my shopping because if I have empty bins and I have nothing in my baskets, I won't have enough inventory to keep the algorithm flowing. Sticking to the inventory process, once everything is clean and prepared and the photos have been taken and it's time to actually assign them a bin number and put them into the inventory, what are we going to use to wrap it? I do not like to spend money on wrapping for the inventory, but I sell hard goods, ceramics, glass, light, weight, fragile, heavy duty, you name it. So I definitely need something to wrap around each item to ensure that the item is not damaged. It needs to be protected from hitting other things. It needs cushion, all of that. So what do I use? I actually use a variety of things. I don't care what it is, where I get it from. I use plastic wrap from packaging, shopping bags, shopping wrap, gift wrap, friends package packaging. I have my friends and neighbors who know that I'm a reseller and know that I have inventory that will collect their paper from all their Amazon orders and give that to me just to not throw it directly into the trash. So that definitely helps be able to reduce the waste that other people are creating because I will reuse the packaging in the bins time and time again. And at zero cost, it's probably one of the more important supply items that I actually do need. So I'm glad that I don't have to spend money on it. So everybody gives me all this stuff. Where do I store it? I know you're asking because bubble wrap, paper, plastic wrap, it can all be very space overwhelming and eat up any system that you may have because it's just everywhere. So I created an organization system under my worktop using Walmart trash cans. That's right. In these $11 trash cans, I store all of the wrap that I use for inventory. They are hidden under this little curtain because of course there has to be a cute touch. We are in a vintage shop. I want it to look adorable, but these trash cans are perfect for small spaces. They are narrow. They are tall, but they hold quite a bit. They are easy to move around and they have a lid on my lid. I just labeled it with a permanent marker. And when Adam is doing inventory listing, he will come to this area, have this workspace open and free. And that one can is not going to take up all the room. And I have a backup because I get that much material from so many people. 
I do have other trash cans that have other material in them, but that's for shipping. So we will go over that whenever we get to the shipping aspect of my organized system. Now that we've gone over the structure, the actual inventory storage, labels, the unlisted inventory storage, and how I store all of my inventory wrap, we can go ahead and start moving on to the actual workspace where all of the listing and preparation gets done. Now the hubby and I are huge believers in financial security and we don't like to spend a lot of money to create any kind of system or station that I want to incorporate into my space. I wanted a big worktop where I could put all my inventory, light box, all the things. So we took some kitchen cabinets that we were given for free and we paired that with some burnt wood and some repurposed legs and some clearance paint and created this gorgeous workspace. I absolutely love it. I love the fact that it is tall and I can stand and work. It has a little bit of storage and it has a lot of space underneath, which worked out to be perfect. Now there are multiple workstations around this one work table. We can get three to four people working in here all at the same time, as long as everybody is doing their job. The front section is mostly for prep and for shipping. The side section is for putting away inventory, listing inventory. And then the back section is where we put our box light. When the box light is not in use, I have a table by the door it's just a little folding table and I sit the box light on top of it. Whenever it's necessary to bust it out, my one of my boys that does pictures, he will pull it out and everybody can work in this space together, kind of taking control of their little area, but making sure that everything is a nice flow. Right now, I have three of my boys officially working in the Bates House shop. One is my listing person, one is my photographer, and one is my prepper. They are all learning the ins and outs and slowly but surely making great progress into their new positions, but everybody ultimately does have to know how to do all positions. Now, one of the most important parts about the items that go into my shop is refurbishing. I like to make sure that my buyer receives the product almost as new as possible. I want to make sure that it's an experience and worth their pennies. So there are a few supplies that I rely on 100%. Number one is towels. You need lots of towels for polishing, for removing marker, for just touching up cleaning before taking pictures. You need Windex for glass and mirrors. You need 91% alcohol for those stubborn marker stains. Barkeeper's friend is a lifesaver. And this, Polish for metal is probably one of my absolute favorites. It works 100% and a little goes a long way. And you need some acetone. I have leather conditioner and leather cleanser. You never know when you're going to find a really cool Mexico made crossbody purse that needs some conditioning. You need disinfectant to make sure that the item is sanitized before shipping. Some all purpose cleaner and wipes to wipe down my station. And that is it. These are the supplies that I rely on 100%. My alcohol was found at a thrift store. My acetone is from Dollar Tree and everything else is online. And when I can come across a stack of labels, either in a lot from something that I buy at Goodwill or for free or whatever, I make sure to put them here in the shop because we can actually use those for labeling each item as it's wrapped to go into its bin. These have worked out so well and they have nice lines and they're a great size so we can read what's on each label. In my workstation, I have two cabinets and one of these cabinets holds supplies. We have some refill wipes, refill alcohol and acetone, some gel stain for touching up those little nicks on wood, and some cutting board oil. This is fantastic for oiling old frames. I have some Singer sewing machine oil, a plate rack just to display plates when taking pictures. And I have some boxes with tools and hardware. So in these three, we have inside tools, repair adhesives and polish. These are all the different supplies that I will grab every now and again for those purposes. 
And then I just have three bins full of hardware that I either exchange from something else, just hold on to or come across whenever going through different vintage goodies. And once everything's been treated, then it gets sent off to be washed one last time before drying and taking photos. Now let's talk about my shipping station. I opted for a cheaper shelf because when I moved into this space, I couldn't find any shelves with the same quality for the same price as my other ones. So I had to kind of commit to using this shelf that doesn't hold as much for shipping supplies and maybe a few inventory pieces that weren't suitable for bins. Next, I needed to maximize my supplies on a small budget. So I needed to get what I could for free or for cheap. Let's start with the free stuff. Over time, I have come to realize that I only need three size boxes. Pretty much anything I need to ship can fit in these boxes. And these boxes can be modified if you need a smaller or larger box. Per the USPS policy, as long as it is the priority mail boxes only, not any flat rate boxes or any other style of boxes that have a set price. The three style boxes that I use is box seven, which is the large shipping box. It is a 12 by 12 by 10 if you round it up. Then the shoe box is the second most often used box that I use. And that one is seven by five by 14 rounded up. And the small box, which is box four, it is seven by seven by six. And those are the box sizes that I enter into my listing information. Now, because I'm a little fearful of being audited, I need to have a physical receipt showing my printed tracking for tax purposes. I also need to print on standard paper so that I can get that receipt and I can afford to do that and pay for the paper because I use the USPS shipping sleeves, which are free. These sleeves overlap and have extremely sticky adhesive, so they will not peel up and they help secure the package. They protect the label and they look nice. So whenever you print on standard paper, it will print your shipping label on the top half and it will print your receipt on the bottom half. I take my paper printed receipt and I staple it to my post office scanned in tracked receipt. This way I keep all of my mileage information and my actual transaction together for tax purposes. Now it's not a big deal for me because my post office is a very small town post office. It's literally right outside my neighborhood and I can't go anywhere without passing it. Plus our lady at the post office is awesome. She's so friendly and chatty and it is small town vibes. So I'm not bothered to go in there and ship my packages. The next freebie is mostly for presentation. I use the priority mail USPS stickers on the edge of the package to show that the package has not been opened or tampered with. Now the best part on top of getting your free shipping supplies is when you ship through eBay, you actually get a discounted rate. So all together, not only are you getting the discounted rate, but your presentation is uniform and nice. You're supporting your local service. The majority of the supplies are free. Your packages are tracked and insured. They deliver your shipping supplies directly to your door. And all you have to do is order online at the USPS website and you'll never have to worry about supplies. On top of that, you can actually schedule a pickup and don't even have to go to the post office to drop them off to get scanned as they ship. They will literally come and pick them up from your house. I am just a little OCD and I need that printed receipt because I feel like it gives the actual date that you send it off. You have a nice receipt showing that you actually sent it off and it's perfect for tracking your mileage. Now let's go ahead and move into the supplies that I actually pay for. Like I said, presentation is everything. I do not want to go through the trouble of refurbishing to just send these treasures an old crusty newspaper or dry rotted bubble wrap that smells like somebody's attic. So when shipping, I do use new and clean products and supplies. Let's talk about bubble wrap. Each item gets at least two layers of bubble wrap. So it can vary from one sheet to 10 sheets, depending on the size of the item. The bubble wrap is extremely affordable, coming in at approximately $35, $37 for four rolls. And I just buy them from the same eBay seller or find a new seller with a comparable price. It's delivered directly to your door and I always try to make sure that I have at least two on hand. So once I hit two, I will reorder more. Also, I do use new clean shipping paper. So far, Walmart has the best pack with the highest quantity for the price and size. 
I love this shipping paper. It's 24 by 24 inches. It's super affordable. It is packing paper by pen and gear or something like that. And they always have it in the shipping aisle. So it's very easy to access whenever you're running in for whatever else, say on your way home or something. Plus, I know Walmart does do deliveries, but we're kind of far from anything and everything. And I'm not paying that fee. Another item is printer paper. I have to have my receipt just for OCD purposes, tax purposes, I need it. So I'm gonna to continue to print on standard printer paper. You can find the best deal at Walmart. It's super cheap and affordable. If you're close by, they'll deliver it with your shipping paper. So just get it there. Online is kind of pricey because it's heavy. So they're gonna charge you that shipping weight. And of course, always shop around back to school time because you can find so many deals on printer paper pretty much anywhere. Now, one item that I will hands down absolutely suggest that you invest in is an Epson EcoTank printer. They have many different sizes, but I would never go back to a regular cartridge printer. This printer is a little bit of an investment when you get it first, but the ink that they give you will last you freaking forever. And then to buy ink to refill your tank costs nothing. So it is absolutely worth the investment to get you a tank, refillable tank printer because there's no going back. I even got another one for my craft room for sublimation because the ink is so awesome and it lasts so long. Now let's take a super quick look at some random small miscellaneous supplies that I'm always sure to have on hand for shipping and inventory purposes. Since I ship hard goods and a lot of breakables, I make sure to line every side of my box with fragile tape, including the top. I want to make sure that if I have a broken item delivered that I can file an insurance claim showing that the box had damage, but it was clearly labeled as a fragile item. Also, I found some super cute tiny thank you stickers on Timu, and I just hold on to those and put one little sticker on the actual shipping label whenever it's going out. I also make sure that I have yarn on hand. I will find really cute colors at Dollar Tree for $1.25 a roll, or I'll find massive rolls for like two bucks at the thrift store. I will wrap every item packaged with yarn. I also make sure to keep blades on hand so that I can modify my boxes. I have a regular box blade and I have an actual box sizer blade. From Daiso, you get multi packs of the regular blades for a buck fifty or a buck seventy five, and then the box cutter was actually a dollar seventy five as well. And then scissors to manually cut the tape whenever I'm putting the fragile tape on. Also, permanent markers. I love to write a thank you on the top of my boxes to show that a human is actually putting these together, and it's me from my shop. Another item that I am sure to stay stocked up on is masking tape. Masking tape is probably one of the best adhesives for labeling. It's so easy to see what you write on them. You get a lot for a little bit of money and it sticks very well. I use those whenever we are doing inventory. If I'm not using some labels or something that I thrifted. Also shipping tape. Shipping tape is pretty much an absolute necessity. You have to secure your boxes to make sure that they're going to get to where they need to get safe and sound. And I like to make sure I have my fragile tape on hand. I'm low now, but I actually have some on the way. Another huge time saver is a shipping tape dispenser. I don't have one for my fragile tape because I like to cut that manually when I put it directly onto the box. So that I don't need one for, but it saves so much time to use this tape dispenser because you can use two hands to hold your box and just kind of flip it and tape it. It's very simple. Now, before we start looking into these miscellaneous supplies in the cubbies and drawers, I want to talk about reduce, reuse, recycle. Of course, we want to do our best to reduce waste whenever we're on this kind of vintage reselling journey. Now, working sustainability into your business probably isn't a priority, but for me, it mainly is because of financial purposes. I do not want to overspend buying material just because if I can resource it through my friends and family, I'm going to do that. So I have accumulated quite a bit of supplies. It also makes it very easy to incorporate these supplies into my actual packages because it's available and it was free. I get a lot of the air pockets from different packages that the hubby orders when he orders car parts, my neighbors order when they get their Amazon orders, and they don't want to just throw it away either. 
And all I did was keep one of the huge car part boxes that we got and just cut a slit into it so that I could feed the new air pockets in or just pull them out as I need them. I did the same thing except I left the box open for these other air pockets. So these are not the same as the air bubbles. They're not connected so I do have to kind of look in there and see what I'm going to get. And I also put some huge pieces of foam wrap. All of this came from my neighbor because she was renovating her house and had to order a bunch of supplies and it came with all of this awesome packaging. And because she knows I like to ship things very well packaged, she passed them on to me. Next are my packing peanuts. These came from the same friend. Like I said, she was renovating, had to order a bunch of supplies, passed it all on to me. She showed up with a huge trash bag full of packing peanuts and they went perfect into an $11 Walmart trash bin. Now let's talk about filler paper. A lot of us like to put the little grass flakes, the little wormies into the box because it just adds a little kind of festive effect when the receiver opens their gift, right? But we don't want to necessarily spend a lot of money on that. Well, thanks to my BFF, Alma, she actually told me one day because she saw it in a video, why don't you get a paper shredder that can shred cardboard? So when you're working with a lot of shipping supplies, you come across a lot of paper scraps. I have paper scraps on the backs of my labels when I trim down my receipts and shipping labels. Also, whenever I cut down my boxes and modify the size, I'll be left with scratch cardboard pieces. And typically I will use them in the packages to stack plates or cups and just kind of add a supporting divider in the box. But if I have plenty and I don't need them for that, I will definitely scrap them and make them filler. Also, as an option, for example, I found these huge craft paper rolls at King Dollar some time ago for a buck and change. I figured I would hang on to them because when I had my Etsy shop, I would use it for wrapping. I would hang on to them for filler paper if I ever needed it and didn't have anything else to scrap. Another way to reduce cost and waste is taking the shipping paper that comes with all of the different packages and fold it up and save it for the bottom of my package. Moral of the story guys, reach out to your friends and family. Everybody's ordering off of Amazon anyway. Your packages can actually be broken down into scatter paper. Your shipping paper from your packages can be stored for cushion in your wrapping. Your bubble wrap can be set aside and also added to your shipping at zero cost and reducing waste. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the last few spaces that house all of the small extra supplies. On the right hand side I have this dresser that I thrifted from Goodwill for $17 and I used a bunch of scratch paint and painted it and stained the top, called it good. I brought it in here and it's the perfect little storage space for all of my everyday shipping supplies. In the top drawer I keep all of my printer paper, my time card paper, bin label paper, Anything paper related or refill paper is in this drawer. In the next drawer, this is essential to shipping and inventory. I have a bunch of stationary supplies, very basic supplies that we use on the regular basis. I have my fragile tape, priority tape, and thank you stickers in one little basket. Next to that, I have my little basket with things for shipping like scissors, blades, marker, all that. I have a little stationary tray behind it that has my thank you notes in there some glue dots to hold it down if it's loose wrapping. I have some blades for cleaning because sometimes it's the easiest way to get things off of glass. Some white out, my yarn, staplers, staple remover. I have a little bin with sticky notes in case I have to make notes about things. Masking tape, a lighter, chapstick, quick grab stuff. Some PO box labels, black pens, pencils, and colored pens and markers. Rulers, envelopes, and a notepad for any notes that I need to make and leave for the boys. It's very simple stuff, but totally essential. In the next drawer, I have uh, repair stuff. So I have some glue dots. I have some cork plugs and some piggy bank plugs. I have plenty of twine to use on wrapping each item. Like I said, I will get it at a very low price and just throw it into this drawer and coordinate it to whatever season or when I'm in the mood to use it. On this wall, we have four plate racks. 
So I made these plate racks with some scrap wood, burned it as I do so many other things in my house. And it just stores a bunch of quick grab stuff. So on the first shelf, I have my refill inks, my priority stickers, some shipping tape that isn't the best quality, so I use it for other stuff, my fragile tape. On the next shelf, I have my drill for repairs. I have my plate stands just for different styles in pictures. A Nintendo, it's a super old one, just for decor, and some decor elements. On the next one, we have our shipping tape and our masking tape, two of the most essential items that I need in this room. Along with that, I have my Ryobi glue gun for the backs of frames and stuff like that. And on the top shelf, I actually just utilize the top shelf for decor and a gorgeous vintage lamp that's just hanging. It's not really functional. I just wanted it to be pretty right there. And that's pretty much it for this wall. I keep my laptop here on top of my printer. I pop it open whenever I'm gonna ship anything and print it directly to the printer and call it good. To the side of this station, I have some wall sconces. I don't have any votives in there because I actually use these as hooks. I have some measuring strips hanging from them. I hang chargers from here. Anything that's long and stringy gets hung on these sconces. I have a vintage little wood rack that wound up being perfect for time cards. Since I am training the boys, they do have to punch in and out because they do get paid like payroll. I have a dry erase board where I get the boys to track certain information like however many items they listed on what day. I just cleaned it off for the new year. Next we have this cart. I'll pull this cart out or just kind of roll it towards me whenever I'm shipping. And it just has a basket that houses some of the little paper scatter. I grab some of that and just toss it into the top of the box whenever the box is done being packaged. And then I have my bubble wrap. Very simple little cart. Just pull it over towards me as I need it. And then of course I have my trash can with my clean shipping paper behind it. Next to that we have the punch clock. They take their time card, put it in there, and it has a digital print of the time that they punch in and out. Now these time cards are not cheap to replace, so I make sure they utilize them as much as they can. And behind the shipping station box with the cleaning supplies is my paper cutter. I cut my labels down with the receipt and the actual label for the box with that paper cutter. Next, we have another dresser. This was actually a gift from a friend. They got new furniture and they gave us a few pieces that we have incorporated into our home. Again, I just painted it with some clearance paint and called it good. In this drawer, we actually store refill supplies. So I go through a lot of markers between inventory, crafting, and canning. So I always make sure to have a bunch of markers on hand along with some pencils and highlighters. The next drawer is my receipt drawer. So this is where I track all of my costs. The next one after that is for doing taxes. And in the last drawer, we have room to grow with some clean towels. Behind the door, I keep a bunch of ties that I have yet to list because I kind of have a connection to them for whatever reason. I really love the old school Looney Tunes ties. I love vintage wool ties, some with gorgeous little patterns. I have some patriotic uh 1776 ties, you're, I mean, Pepe Le Pew, vintage Disney, all kinds of cool ties, Tabasco ties and stuff that I just haven't wanted to let go of. So they just stay back here looking cute on the wall. Now, before we close out this video, because we've pretty much looked at everything, I wanted to give you a shipping tip. What I've learned over time is that you do not want to pack your packages so hard and tight. What I've learned is that these packages go through machines and they kind of bounce around. So if you don't allow your pieces to have room to wiggle and shake and shift in the box, you're going to get impact breaks, which is going to be horrible because then you have to go through the process of getting your insurance claim done and all that other stuff, refunding the item. It's a bad experience for the buyer. We just don't want that. So when you are packaging, allow your items to breathe a little. You want that cushion, but it should be able to shift and shake when it bounces. 
I hope that helps and it makes you a little bit more successful when shipping your packages in case you've been experiencing breaks. So if this video was helpful to you guys, I would love to hear it down below. Give me some feedback because this system works for me. It is the foundation of every organized system that I use in my house, which is one step in, one step out systems from left to right, top to bottom. It works in everything that I do and it works in this station. I waste very little time walking around looking for things. I can always have room to grow and add without having to modify an entire system. The steps are super simple and basic that three teenagers can work in this space without a problem. And before I forget, don't forget to get you a black light because if you are selling vintage and come across some vintage depression uranium Vaseline glass, you need to know what you have. And of course, you're going to have to include pictures with the black light. So make sure you grab one of those. But for now, guys, that is it for this one. I do hope that you enjoyed. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Also, if you are new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell on your way out to be notified of new videos whenever I post. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. Let me know if this video was helpful at all. And of course, you can help support my channel by sharing this video with anybody that needs help or can relate. And if you love all things vintage or just want to be all up in my business, then you can follow me on Instagram at the Bates House, hashtag Bates House, pretty much anything, and we will be there. Also, feel free to check the description box because I will throw in as many links as I can come up with for the stuff that I showed in this video. And please follow my eBay store because I am doing my best with what I have and I hope that I can be successful in it just like many other sellers. And that is it for this one. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.